Hello, stitchy people. <laughs> what is up? I feel like I haven't seen you in a month because I haven't. Um, on that note, I know it may feel kind of weird because I was doing weekly videos and then I like abruptly kind of quit and went to these like beginning of the month, end of the month videos. But honestly, I'm really liking this kind of, ch this change for me. Um, it takes the pressure off to have like a weekly upload, especially when I don't feel like I stitch as much as some others. I'm thinking, you know, Sammy from Sammy J, um, Vicky from Stitching and Reading, um, Sarah from Our Stitching Kingdom. Like, I don't personally think that I stitch as much as they do um, in a given week. I wish I did. I don't know how they do it. I truly... I'm in awe of them. Like, ladies, you guys are fantastic. You're amazing. I just, I bow to you. I bow to you. I'm just, the Rita and just the other Vicky, like, all y'all just, I don't, how do you do it? Um, because I, I feel like I stitch, you know? Like, I, but I only, I work part time. And then I come home, you know, I have two dogs and a cat and a kid and a husband to take care of and a house. <laughs> But I still stitch in the evenings before, like after Caden goes to bed, um, you know, and then before I go to bed, I do a lot of my stitching. On the weekends, I do a lot of my stitching. I feel like I'm really bright. I'm really washed out. Something is, let's fix some of my lighting. Whatever. The, the brightness of this window will never go away. Anyways. <laughs> I, I don't know how y'all do it. Like, I'm just busy. And I am a, I think I am a slow stitcher. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that I'm left-handed. I really don't think that truly affects my stitching speed. I think I'm just a slow stitcher. Um, and sometimes I get distracted. And sometimes some projects go faster than others. Others, you know, maybe you have more color changes and that slows you down. You know what I mean. Um, I'm just a slow stitcher. Another one with that. Anyways, so let's jump in. Now, I already know this is going to be quite a video, so I have decided I'm going to break it up into a couple videos because I don't want it to be monstrously long. Um, I don't want to do that as, a, as like filming and recording and editing and uploading. I don't want that. Um, I also don't think you guys want that. So I figured we'll see how far we get. Um, but I'm going to kind of put a cap on the time. If I start going past like 30 minutes, I'm going to end it and we're going to move on from there. Because let's be real, I don't have the patience. I wouldn't want to sit and watch me talk for a really long time. Maybe you feel differently about watching me talk. And I'm flattered if you do. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so that's where we're at. We're going to see how far we get in 30 minutes. Because the things I want to cover, I want to talk about my stitching month. Because I actually, shockers. I think I touched on every single one of my whips. Who am I? What just happened? What? Um, so I want to show you the progress I made on my whip. I want to talk about the books I read in the month of March. And then also my personal life. What happened during March for me? Because you know, with me not doing these weekly updates, I still want to keep you guys involved in my life and what's going on and just let you be a part of me and my channel. Like, that's what this is. Um, and I want to share that with you. Then I also want to go over my April stitching plans. And I want to talk about all of the events that are happening in different groups. I do want to get back into that, at least doing like a monthly overview of what's happening in the various groups. I like doing those. I do miss doing those. So I want to do a monthly overview and we all know that in itself can take some time. So what's going on in the event? What I personally plan on doing in different groups, um, my April reading plans and I don't know, just other April plans I have, I guess. So hopefully not more than two videos, but we will see. Like I said, I want to cap it right around that 30 minute mark. That way it's not just me rambling on forever and ever. But first things first, let's talk stitchy business. Um, some things got touched on more than others. And I'm noticing I'm falling behind in certain things. <laughs> and 
yeah, like, I'm crazy. What? And I want to add another whip? Like, what is wrong with me? So, let's, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. That's crazy to me. That's utterly crazy to me. Did I really touch on all of my whips? Okay, cool. And then I'm like, oh, add another. Like, we are three months into the year, and I just now got to the month where I touched on everything. And again, I only have five. Like, whatever. Sorry, I had other stuff on my desk. I just filmed a different video. <laughs> that was a wax video, if you're interested in that. Okay. Let's start with things I can put away easily. How about that? Let me pull my stitchy card in closer. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Hang on. Caden has a question he wants to ask me. Give me one moment. Awesome. Yeah, mom thinks. <laughs> so, first whip I'm going to show you is the Stroba Halloween, the Sal, Stroba Halloween Sal of 2021 from Stitchonomy. Um, making good progress on it, I guess. I feel like I really didn't do much. I'm looking, I'm trying to remember what I had done last month. I honestly don't remember. Whatever. Um, so, I changed the frame it was in. It was in. Um, Q-snap, but I was having, I just didn't have the right size Q-snap for the size fabric that it is. It's kind of a weird shape fabric, so getting it into a Q-snap and actually fitting the Q-snap was becoming kind of a struggle for me, so I switched it over to some scroll frames. I did go ahead and trim the fabric very poorly on some of the sides. It is a little closer than I would have liked it to be in certain places. Um, my rotary cutter got away from me when I was cutting it, like, straight line, straight line, room. and that was a moment of terror. You, you, you probably have been there, you know what I mean. Um, so I did switch it onto the scroll frames. It is working much better for me to have it in the scroll frames. Um, sorry, I'm trying so hard. Um, when you film, if you have filmed, you'll know that you can see yourself, um, you know, you as you, you can see you're recording, the way I have my camera and my screen positioned, um, my face is literally right behind the lens of the camera. And so I can see myself and it is kind of disorienting. I'm trying really hard not to just like look slightly above at myself instead of at you guys. <laughs> it's, 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 it's hard. So anyway, here we are. This is where we are. We have switched over to the, the scroll frame. Um, I don't remember. These guys have been done for a while. I honestly don't remember if the moth, if like Mothman was done. I don't know. Let's assume Mothman was done except for some back stitching. So I finished up Mothman, finished up the blue back stitching background, did this guy. What was this guy called? Like Babak? Babook? I don't remember. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't remember what this is. Did that one really quick. And then have made good progress on Beetlejuice. He's pretty much done, um, except for his green hair. I'm just working on his hair. Uh, I feel like it is hard to see. Yeah, the white is not showing up for whatever reason. But there is a significant amount of white. Like his whole head... A needle. <laughs> his whole head is white. His, there are white stripes in between the black, but Beetlejuice is coming along. So I did work on him. Um, I use Beetlejuice for specifically for the Animal Adventures prompt in Daily 30. And that is why I want to do, this is a reason why I want to go into um, those monthly overviews again because I want to explain how I'm stitching on my projects and maybe why some of them get more love than others or maybe it feels like you know I didn't really put that much that many stitches in this one but like last month I put a crap ton of stitches like 
like what is my logic why am i doing this um so hopefully it makes more sense to you guys why maybe you know like i had a whole month why did it look like i barely touched it kind of thing so that's my thought process and i do also think i want to start showing my planner again um i finally think i have like a system down for my stitchy planner that i used all last month and it worked really really well for me and that's really encouraging so i'm going to do it again this month and i think if it continues along this month and i'm still seeing that i'm really liking it and it's really working for me i'm going to share it with you it is not overly complicated but it works for me so i'll let you know okay put that over there we're going to put it back in the stitchy card next let's do oh, Harry Potter. Um, so this is the letters from Hogwarts. Somebody messed with my keys now. Maybe it was me. Maybe I lessened, loosened them. I lessened them. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Um, so this is letters from Hogwarts. I did not make as much progress um, on this one. I did work on it for a few like tasks, a few prompts, but did not put in um, stitches. So, brief explanation as well. This is the one I mean that I am, my accent is coming through so strongly this video and I'm not sure what's going on. I am slipping into a southern accent. <laughs> I am sorry. If you don't know, I am originally from southern Indiana on, I lived on the Kentucky border. Like it was a 10 to 15 minute drive just to cross over into Kentucky. So. I have worked very, very hard to not have a very thick southern accent, uh, and sometimes it slips out, and that's okay, but it's just very amusing to me that it's happening, it's happened quite a few times already this video, when I don't feel like it normally does, unless I'm completely insane and it comes out more than I think it does. Anyways, so Harry Potter, I chose this piece um, as like my own personal, like year-long um, like year-long sell is how I, you know, to view it because, you know, it, I've talked about it so many times. I feel like I repeat myself constantly. It is meant to be a gift. I really wanted to get it done last year. I did not get it done. I barely touched it last year. And I want this to go to my niece, you know, before she turns 18. Like, <laughs> so it needs to be worked on, right? And it is such a monster piece. Um, and so I have tried to break this down into like a 12-month for myself and break it down into parts, do them apart each month. Um, this, so this section that ends here, this was February and then March was to finish this whole block. You can kind of tell the bottom of this block ends, my lights are kind of ruined. There's, you can see it here, there's like really creamy colored stitches. It stops here. So March was February was this section, March was the ending of this box, probably some border over here. April is the top section of this box. March, April, May is the second bottom of this box. I'm supposed to be over here. I don't even have February done. So I'm behind on this one. Um, definitely this first like weekend in April, I'm gonna be working on this. As soon as I finish this video and it starts uploading and doing the editing and stuff like that, I will be working on this because I, I, it needs love. I do still really love this piece. Um, I just don't want to fall behind. I fell into that trap last year. I fell into the trap when it came out. Um, and I don't want to do that. So I want to show this piece love. I want to be consistent with it. That's where this one is. I do love the badger though for the Hufflepuff. I know I had never really worked on something that was 100% full coverage before. Um, and this is obviously the whole piece is not full coverage. This particular section is and it is just very very time consuming when literally every single box has a stitch there are quarter stitches there are three quarter stitches um there is back stitch there's a lot of details and it is just very time consuming this particular like the badger this line like on his head there are a lot of quarter and three quarter stitches in this little section and just doing the counting and like looking at the pattern, looking at my fabric, looking at the pattern, looking at my fabric, just this alone took me, it took forever 
I want to say like it probably it I know it didn't take like a full hour but it took me some time because obviously it forms it looks awesome in my opinion it looks amazing those quarter stitches and three quarter stitches they are worth it a hundred percent they are worth it but to get this look takes time and you need to slow down and be very careful and aware of every single place you're putting your needle worth it but still so it's Harry Potter Harry Potter Harry Potter um next I have oops, don't keep on over that's the stitch bag for it um and I do like to keep this is obviously not Harry Potter I'll explain. So I like project bags in the sense that I like having, I don't necessarily need a project bag for my whips themselves because most of the time I feel like I have them on these big, they're on big scroll frames or they're on, you know, cue snaps. I have big projects. I like to have room. I like to have space. I don't need, I don't know. I like, I just like having it all spread out. Um, but I like having little like project bags to hold my floss and like a pair of scissors, whatever counter I'm using, maybe some extra needles or um, needle minders, uh, like a highlighter or a pencil for the pattern. I keep all of my paper patterns and a binder, which I have in my living room. So like I try to keep everything organized and bundled. Um, so when I say project bags, I don't mean like giant project bags, but I like having a project bag for projects. So like this is all of the floss and stuff for in comparison, this is what I'm using for Harry Potter. <laughs> um, it's like a tackle box, is what my husband calls it. My, my husband calls it a tackle box. It's it's a tackle box. I, just because I got it at Joanne's does not mean it's not a tackle box. Um, and it, <laughs> I have bobbins, I have scissors, I have markers, and it, um, I'm trying to like, <laughs> we've got like I said I have bobbins I have whole skeins down here and then in the bottom I have I have counting pens I have got more skeins I have more highlighters I have extra bobbins I have like the number GMC numbers for my bobbins um, because this project is so floss heavy and there are like hundreds of floss colors and I want to keep it all together it, uh, it, it lives in this tackle box. And honestly, this was like the best decision I've made for storing floss. For like a, for a project that requires as many different colors and multiple skeins of like the same color, this, highly recommend. This was such a great decision. It holds, it holds everything I want. And it's small, and it sits right there under my desk, and it's not in my way. Anyways, I just got off on such a tangent. So, uh, this is Read Now. Got some good stitches on this. Um, so, finished all of the text, text sections here. This banner goes all the way across. There is a book that sits in the center, and then there's some more text sections over here um, yeah this is coming along great this is fine I have a couple I'll show you my back I don't care I have like I've got a couple knots where the fabric where I just was not paying attention and was stitching too quickly and that bothers me but I mean I'm really proud of this back okay <laughs> my backs do not necessarily look this nice and this is really nice in my opinion <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Um, anyways, I am nervous the book. It's this whole middle section, and those are just solid, like, 100 blocks of, like, one solid color. And I'm afraid I'm going to get bored. So, really, if I was smart, I would not keep putting it off until the very end. I would go ahead and, like, do, like, a strand a day of the color I have picked which is a really pretty, I almost want to say like 
stereotypical like fall pumpkin spice orange that I've picked because I've done these darker colors except for this bright red banner which I didn't. <laughs> I can't wait to watch this footage back and see that I just snacked my glasses with the corner of my, my frame. Lord help me. If I wasn't wearing glasses, I would have just walked myself in the face, like in the eye. Oh, help me. Help me. <laughs> Anyways, these muted colors. <laughs> Not muted, deeper, richer colors for this. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to put this one away now before I injure myself. There's that. Um... I did pull out my holiday truck ornaments, and I worked on those. I did a full 500 stitches on um, the piece holiday truck ornament. I'm pleased with the way this one is coming along. Um, so, yeah, we did some more backstitching. I believe I did all of this. I started the letters. That definitely was not there. Uh, yeah, so 500 stitches on this, feeling pretty good. Um, when I pull it out, you know, I find the enjoyment I had for it. I, I refill that enjoyment. So, um, yeah, I'm okay that there was only 500 stitches because I think I'll pull it out again really, really soon. Um, I think I am kind of a seasonal stitcher. It is kind of hard for me to work on a Christmas piece you know, in March and April. Um, it feels weird, but, you know, I still want to get it done. I, if I want to be able to pass these out as I intend, then I do need to work on it outside of the season, and that's fine. Just, I'm trying to, like, keep my own feelings in mind, because I, the last thing I want to do is burn myself out on a project, and then I set it aside, and I don't work on it for a year, like I did with other projects. I have to sneeze. Oh, no! Uh, I paused the video in time. <laughs> Did not need you guys seeing me sneeze or whatever on camera. So, holiday truck. Wee! Oh, looks good. I was going to say, I've gotten so much better at leaving unfinished thread. Um, when I first started stitching, I was not able to just, like, leave a thread. Um, I had to, like, finish a full thread before I could like switch colors like I I don't I have this weird mental block about leaving threads of colors so the fact that I have like a back stitch here and a back stitch thread here and I've got a white here and then the red is here like I would not have been able to do that when I first started I would need have I could not fathom like leaving a thread there instead of continuing stitching um so that's to me that's that shows progress in my stitching um because i won't limit myself now by trying to do like a color completion or a thread completion if i've hit like a stopping point with that thread because you know i need to fill in a different area first because i don't want to travel or i don't want you know it to bleed through i stop now but I'm not going to just cut that thread off. Like, I'm not going to, you know, run it and cut that thread off because it still has. I still have it, and I, I still have more to stitch in that area. Um, that shows progress to me. I definitely would not. I would have either needed previously, like, to end the thread and then be left, like, weird, with a weird cut end. Or, like I said, try and deal with a color completion or a thread completion. And to me, it just made my work more messy. I made things more hard on myself because I was putting stitches like in the way when it should have, yeah. Stitching should not stress you out, okay? It should be an enjoyable hobby. It should not bore you. It should not stress you. You should be able to have fun. So <laughs> I'm glad I've made progress with like my ability to just, I guess, leave it messy. And then last but not least, which is good because we're about 25 minutes in, so I think I will stop this video after I show you this last project, is 
So here's an example of like a project bag where the project happily fits in the project bag, but then I have another bag inside of a bag. Don't ask questions. But like this happens very rarely where it all will fit inside one bag. Um, and the only reason why it's happening right now is because this is on a six inch hoop. And I think I've mentioned before, I don't normally stitch in hoops. I did at the very beginning. I feel like it's a very custom, like beginner's kind of thing. You start in a hoop. Nothing wrong with that. And then some people continue to stitch in hoops because they like it. I was not one of those people. I found I got, and I still do, I get really annoyed with a hoop. I have I have a hard time maintaining my tension and getting it centered. Um, I always have to end up going to my husband and asking him to help me with it. And I got really, really frustrated because I didn't want to have to run to my husband every single time I wanted to, you know, adjust my piece of fabric or switch pieces kind of thing. So then I switched over to Q-snaps and then scroll frames. And I love, I love those. These are definitely like my top when it comes to ways of holding my projects. A hoop is fine on occasion. So like I did go and buy a five inch hoop and a six inch hoop. This is a six inch hoop. I did go and buy this specifically. I have a couple small projects and like this is one, obviously this is a six inch hoop and I still have gaps. So I was having, same thing, a hard, hard time holding this in a Q-snap. Um, it just was not fitting and I was getting really frustrated and you know, I was constantly adjusting the tension um, and I got annoyed. And so then I went and I got some small hoops and had my husband help me put it in and it has stayed in this hoop since I had him do it for me and that's it. And it will stay in this hoop until I'm ready for it to come out, which will be when it's done. Also, I put things in my hoop differently, I think, than some people do. Um, so if you will notice, here's the hoop. Um, my stitchy side, the front, is actually, I guess you could say, on the bottom of the hoop. Right? So then the back, I guess, would be, you would say, it's on top of the hoop. If you were framing a piece, this is how, you know, you would frame it. You would have the front of your stitching on top of the hoop. Um, stitching, I like to put it kind of, I guess, in the belly, in the bowl. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, because I like the freedom and the access it gives me to the back, having it on top for when I am ending threads, when I am starting threads. Um, I like having this on top for that closer access, especially when this particular pattern, as small as it is, has co called for variegated floss. And um, the original pattern states for every single color to be variegated, and I went, no. Um, I did choose to keep the hat and the scarf as variegated. I guess I should explain. Sorry, this is the piece. This is called Baby's First Christmas. It is a big penguin and a little baby penguin. Um, they have little winter hats. Um, they have a scarf and the bottom of their body sits down here. Um, and then it says like Baby's First Christmas over here. Um, the whole, like I said, the whole piece was supposed to be variegated and I said no and so I chose to do just regular DMC for the actual penguins, but I am keeping the hat and the little bubble and the scarf I kept as variegated because I think it's cute and it's pretty. And I do have some really pretty variegated floss that I wanted to use. I didn't have the called for colors. Um, so I just dug around in my collection and picked what I have. This is just, this, the red is actually a DMC variegated. It is, let me, It is not that. Get off of here. It is this one. It is 115. Um, so it does shades of dark red to light red. It is showing up as a really bright on here. It is not. It has some beautiful, really deep, dark shades and then some lighter shades. And then for the green, I chose um, Aaron Go Emerald. And this is looking it's looking almost more blue on camera but it's not it is a very deep dark emerald green it called for almost like a spring green and I didn't like that 
so I chose to do a deeper, darker emerald green. So, also, I know this looks really weird. This is how the pattern has it. It has that it stops two stitches from the side. There is some back stitching there that I haven't done that I'm hoping once I do will change it. I. It looks weird to me. Anyway, so this is it. Um, when I started, I pretty much just had, I had like the baby face and I had like the adult face and the black to like here. And so then this month I finished the black and I have done the baby's hat, the hearts, and all of this. And that was 400 stitches. I know that for a fact because I just finished it the other night. Uh, yeah. And so this is a total of 800 stitches so far. One of the cute little faces. I do actually really like the back stitching eyes on these pingins. These little pingies. So it's cute. This is also going to, obviously not for us, <laughs> this is going to somebody else who had, um, it was their baby's first Christmas last year. So um, this is actually going really, really quickly. Um, I'm not too worried. I'm keeping it up because I'm going to continue stitching on it um, like this week some more because once I really sit, get going with it, even with the variegated, it stitches up. Like I said, it's stitching up really quickly. It's not a hard stitch. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's fine. Plus I want to get it done because I don't like hoops. Um, and this is my tally counter. That's what this is. This is how I keep track of stitches. I am not good at like keeping my phone next to me and like counting my stitches on my phone. I know some people do. I am not one of those people because if I have my phone up next to me and turned on, I will 100% get off topic and start looking at Facebook or playing a game. Like I will get distracted. So I use standard handheld tally counters. I've got a couple of these where they're like you, they're meant to be like wrapped onto your finger and so you can on your finger. And I do that sometimes. Sometimes it gets in the way. Um, but with a hoop, it's really nice because I've just put it around the hoop and it's right there. So whenever I'm ready, I just... It works for me. Do whatever works for you. Like I said, I do like... I have mechanical ones and I have a couple big boys that I really like in different colors. They are all different colors, and so then I also can color code them to my projects, which comes in handy. It's so, like I look at this one, and I know exactly that this is for Storybook Halloween. Um, I have another pink one for my niece's project. Like I, I color code things. I keep things organized, and that's how it works for me. And with that, we are you know, thirty something minutes in. I'm gonna wrap this up here. I'm really good. We got through all of the stitching progress I made. Um, stay tuned and I will do a reading and personal life update for March and then we'll go into into what we're working on in April so um, happy stitching happy reading happy listening happy watching happy what's something new I haven't said happy cooking I don't know. Um, happy doing whatever it is that makes you happy doing I will see you all very very soon uh, in the meantime, be easy with your heart.